through the Water, Peace and Security Partnership, we hope to prevent conflicts over water through enabling communities to take action at an early stage. We started the partnership last year, brought all partners together. Currently, we're in the phase where we create a proof of concept. Data is fundamental to understanding uh, where the risks are highest, what's driving these risks, and they also suggest what possible solutions might be in order to mitigate risk. Validation is a key part of our process. We try to test our analysis on, on known events, and then we're also working with our partners and with local experts in helping validate using on-the-ground knowledge. So it's a lot of research, it's a lot of conversations and discovering the, the right data set for the right purpose. Global data are very important to understand where and when there could be risks, but when you start thinking about what you can do to reduce these risks, you really need to understand how locally water shortage could translate into social consequences. Part of the communication and engagement of stakeholders is to increase the joint understanding of the entire system and to also broaden the scope of actions that can be taken and to mobilize people to really take this action because they understand that what they do can have implications also for others and maybe even have impact on themselves. So it is not enough to know that a certain country, region, river basin will be affected by conflict, but it's important to know why that is happening, what the role of water exactly is, but then also what factors you can influence either as a policymaker in the respective region or as an external party to solve the conflict. And especially in times of scarce resources, not only water resources, but also financial resources, it's important to have the data to analyze which action on the ground will actually be effective in the end and lead to peace and cooperation. I think dialogue is important in every conflict. Often people try to resolve conflict by just controlling the conflict, but in the end it never works. There's lots of literature that shows that dialogue is in the end what works. And since uh, water is one of the drivers of conflict, it's very important also to have dialogue between different parties about water-related issues. We're starting a conversation between the different stakeholders and that they actually identify actions that are needed to address the water and security risks in their country. I think it's very important to work with local people, to talk with them how we can add value and how we can support them to solve conflicts. In this project what we try to do is really look at the short-term impacts of threats like water scarcity so that leaders feel the need to really act within their term in office. We have made a deliberate effort to actually put this information uh, forward to leaders at different levels, for instance at the UN Security Council, but we're also looking at how we can create a dialogue between national leaders, confront them with the knowledge that we have and discuss with them the options they have to actually act. I expect after two years, so by November of this year, our global water tool is operational and openly accessible for everyone. My dream would be that the Water, Peace and Security Partnership contributes to preventing conflict and that we reduce stress and conflict over water. To achieve this, we need a large community to contribute and to be active. We would really hope other donors contribute also to the partnership so that we can implement it at a larger scale.